What I think is the question I've got to do with that, though, is to bless the people before, to bless the people to work, to bless the people to work, to bless the people to 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 Very few will do that. Very few will do that. And then the Bible tells us to study, to show thyself a proof of God, a work in that need it not to be a truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. And it gives you that suggestion for a reason. So you can take a figure out some of these verses or passages that seem to be a contradiction of one another. So, uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 now. We're picking up uh, verse 4. It says, For it is in. Now, we're going to go down all the way through. Um, go all the way down to verse Says, for it is impossible for those who are once in life and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, See, they crucified to themselves the Son of God of Christ, and put him to the place of the church. For the earth which brings in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth her to meet to them by whom it is dressed, receive a blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto curses, whose end now, this passage is a heck of a lot. And uh, you look at this thing, first of all, some bind things to life. They see the light. Their eyes have been seen. They're not just by God. They've tasted of that heavenly gift. Okay? They were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. 
sounds like the day is not going to be. But if they fall away, they can't be saved. They can't be saved. How do we even first begin to be found? I think that's a good point. The first is that the Father is alive. Turned over to the devil and the devil is going to be used to it. This guy is going to be used to it. Boy, that's a state. That's a state. I mean, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open hand. They understand who the Son of God was, that they had rejected him and put him to it. They had just like rejected him and put him back on the bed. Open thing. It's I mean, God takes the thorns and briars, rejects them, and burns them. Now that's the phrase, that's what he says. The singing phrase is what he says. Now, how do we understand it? How do we come to the understanding? Well, as I've been teaching with the book of Hebrews, it's written to a certain group, doctrinally applied to the Christian group. With that certain group, you have to take and come into the doctrinal dealings with that group of how it's applied to them to understand some of these passages. You try to force that on a concrete thing. Very impressive. Or you're going to have to manipulate it really fast. There's all kinds of different explanations that people give to this past. So they try to say, well, they say, I don't know, let me give you some of uh, I can't remember them all. So there's some different explanations where some people try to get around this thing. And uh, here's the different points that they give. Okay. We have uh, we've got a bunch of different theories listed in this reference to Bible. And here's what he said. Different points. I do take a to all these different but I heard all kinds of explanations on it. None of the scholars' commentary to explicit or some of the same verses on the left. They say none of them, but a lot of them don't. So they come up with four interpretations, but all of them are wrong. The first thing they come up with they do is make them us we. Yes, it's easy. We can be the same. Not we. The literary first person plural, a reference to Christian or famous Jews specifically in the first age. If you make the us of the first age, then you have somebody losing their salvation. Now, this is one charismatic holy is a Methodist teach that one can lose their salvation. But the problem is they teach that they can lose them before the lose of their life. This was their position. I put you in the So uh, they have to take and uh, still manipulate this to do that. So uh, you wind up with somebody that teaches this, teaches one to lose his salvation and in the first day. That's not true. Okay. So that goes against the clear doctrine of the Son of the Now in all I do is the book of God, it's the Bible says, it's the very, 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 God's love never parts from the I will never leave you nor forsake you. This guy, who can't be forsaken, is forsaken. 
of the scribe, the church of the church, that does not match the doctrine of the church of the church. If you can find passage after passage after passage to do, I've talked to the church of the church of the church. Okay? So that first interpretation does not work. That ain't going to work. All right. Uh, next one. First fellow uh, comes up with makes the passage the first. I'm not going to name the one that do this. Here's another one. Makes the passage the first in Christmas as well, but he makes it a hypothetical thing. If a person could get lost, then he couldn't get saved. Again. So he makes it hypothetical. If we could take him into the But he can't, so it's just like he said. That's a little bit better, but it's still not what the path is set. Okay. And it's a little bit better. Then you have uh, the third view was is taught today by a certain individual who sit down to verse 8 to make it a reference to a Christian work burning up at the church. So it's not the Christian who says work that they can do to the Bringing something into it, it doesn't change. All right? Why? Because you just can't accept what it says. And they run into this and are like, wait a minute, whoa, this is contradicting everything that we've ever thought. By some students, God takes and works this thing around, twists around. Okay? There's the fourth one. Uh, I'll give you this uh, because I actually do recommend this lesson in the Bible. And I agree with you on most of them, except for this. The final is certain that the theological system is found in the Schofield reference by Schofield that it makes the people in the past as the first to save people, but then it's because he divorces the past from his concept. Schofield likens this down to the same unbelieving sign of the Christian by finding the same in the discussion in chapter 34. I think here in the world is closer to the accuracy. But it's not to be said because you can go to say that Barnina and say it's absolutely a reference to the Old Testament because most of the downtown go into the Bronx when it's here. Is that what they're talking about? And then more here. But he does see that it's not referring to a first day state. He sees that one. I'd say of, of them all, we'll say that. Now, I'll even reference to the typology of numbers where they go into the problem with this passage. That's just the typology. It's not who it's talking about. But, uh, so that one, you know, I'd say, is a little bit closer to what it is. Now, what is this? All right. What is this uh, passage talking about? Let's start going through this passage. Dissecting it a little bit, looking at it very close. All right. First of all, verse four. For it's possible for those who are once enlightened and a taste of the heavenly bliss, yes, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. This is somebody that has a gift given to them of the Holy Ghost that comes upon them. Now, it does not say that there is well to be by the Holy Ghost. It is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Charismatic means that after a man says that he has to speak his tongue to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to show that he Now he speaks the tongue. He has an action to speak the Holy Ghost. That's a charismatic Teddy Thompson teaching. Now, for every lie, there's an element of truth behind 
behind you. I want you to take your Bible and come to Acts chapter 2. So here's a bunch of that are waiting for the Holy Ghost to come upon us. But all those who are going to be coming. Yep. The Lord's already believed on me. But something happens when the Holy Ghost here in Acts chapter 2. So when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they're all one of those, one of those. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them spoken tongues like of a fire, and it sat upon the people. And they were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. And they can just speak with other tongues as it did to the mother. And there was well in that group who seemed to bow down out of every nation under heaven. And then when there was noise abroad, the whole group came together with the founders because every man heard them speak in the same language. Which tells you what tongues do, they speak in their own language. They heard them speak in their own language. Not speaking in a language that people. Doesn't exist. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all of you to speak Galileans? And how here we every man in our own tongue, hearing we were born. Apparently, these and Elamites, as well as the Mexicans, Indians, Cappadocians, Pontus, and Asians. Sorry, Jeff, and Joey, and these just to be the parts of the region about that we Frank is well seen to talk about it. So those are all the different groups that are here in their language. Priests and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful words of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying, Once and more, what mean is this? Others talking to me before they were wise. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto the new men of Judah, and all you that dwell in Jews, who do this known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as what the third hour of the day. But if this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, and if thou come to pass in the last day, says God, I will, now this is what he said, now this is prophesied in verse chapter 2. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon the children of Israel, in the last day. That's not the key to the last day. That's not the key to the type of what you said happened. Now, if they had received their Messiah, it could have been the last day. That's the thing you said. They don't receive it. They're given a second chance to the preaching of the truth and the truth of what we have. What we have is the Jews of the nation to be set aside and the Gentiles coming in and the church coming in because the Jews will not be set aside and they are the Jews constantly to death Jesus Christ in the book of Acts. And finally at the end of the book of Acts it says I go to the Gentiles. Paul says I go to the Gentiles. We get a new Now remember Paul's life is the book of Jesus. So it says, This is what was spoken by the last prophet for. It came to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your mother, young men shall see visions, and girls shall bring dreams. Now, these are going to come up. That's going to be come up with you. The red is in last days, according to the last day. We'll go there in a minute. And 
all my servants and all my families, I will pour out in those days of my pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, and through the great and holy the day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that new servants that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The men of Israel hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among them, by miracles and wonders and signs that God did by them. And the next thing is, you, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the eternal counsel of the of God, you have taken by wicked hands and crucified his son. Whom God raised up, having used the name of them, because it is not possible that he should be holy to another. Alright? So the Holy Ghost comes down on these. Now they're already Christians. They're already saved. They've already believed in Jesus Christ. And Peter is talking to the Jews that have not believed. Alright? Now look down at Acts 10 again. Another very misunderstood book by Jesus and the false doctrine, but there's something I want to point out to you. So then Peter saith unto them, he said it is written, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the commission of sin, and ye shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that what they did with it? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Coming down on the Holy Ghost. I want you to go back to Jesus. That's the truth. Look at it. And he said to Jesus, Very cool. For it is impossible for those who want to fight him have tasted of the absolute good and were made part of the faithful of the Holy Ghost. Now go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. There's prophecy. Joel chapter 2. And, uh, Look at verse, uh, Where he comes from. Uh, verse 28. Go to 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall bring you, your young men shall see vision. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I what? Pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood and fire, pillars and smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the sea into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Now, what does it say? It says, Behold the great and terrible day of the Lord. It happens to be the first of the day of the Lord. It happens to be the first of the day and it shall come to pass that new servants shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be delivered, as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now the Hebrews of Jews talk to the people who is the remnant. They took it out in the wilderness in the preservation time for them. And the Lord shows up to them like he did in, Mount, in, in the mount and talk to them. 
and they received the Holy Ghost. So that who's being taught to Peter in Jesus Christ's book, that group of kids, people, they received the Holy Ghost, they received the Heavenly Spirit. Yes. But for some reason, they reject it, and they go back to the world system, which is what at that time? I want to give you the full piece What is the world system at that time? Who's in power, sitting in the seat of the temple in Jerusalem at that time? The Antichrist. And he set up in the image, and for you to buy or sell at that time, you must take the mark of the beast and worship that image. Right? So that's Jews that's out in the wilderness who flee, Matthew 24, flee from the house of Revelation chapter 2, the carried by the angels, out in the wilderness where they are fed, so they don't have to be in the wilderness. They're out in the wilderness. The Lord speaks. They received the Holy Ghost. They prophesied. They understood. Their eyes are enlightened. They know. Yet they have to endure to the end. And they don't. They turn back. They go back to Jerusalem. And they make it trouble. They do it for fun. They do it for fun. That is the one that is not to be used to take that. He takes the one that is not to be used to take that. He does that to be used to take that. Because he doesn't want to be used to take that. He says, human, they wouldn't do that. Are you kidding? Have you never read the book of Exodus? The book of Exodus? what the children of Israel did after they seen everything that God did for them. How they were rejected by God and all of them died except for Caleb and Joshua. Now, I'm going to give you some references so you can see this big picture. I just explained the big picture of what's going on here. Let me give you just a bunch of references and we'll go through these references where you can see this. Okay? The thorns in verse A are thorns because they rejected Christ again. They rejected him even though they've been enlightened. They rejected him. Take the Bible and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. Says, but the sons of Bilial, Bilial is rebellion. And that is our name for the death. Okay. The sons of Bilial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with him. But the man that shall touch them must be sent with iron staff of the spirit. They shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. Now there's all kinds of references in the universe of the Lord who's going to die with fire. These are the sons of Belial. These are people that were in the and you'll see that reference to Belial, the sons of Belial, all through the Old Testament. And so it's a common prayer. And uh, even in the, the time of the numbers of the Exodus, when they rebelled against the Lord, they were first to the sons of Belial. Okay? Now they were rejected in their firm with fire. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 10. This is a, this in the same book is a direct prophecy, false representation with Hebrews chapter 6. 
Hebrews chapter 2. Look at verse uh, 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But a fear, certain fearful looking for the judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much poor punishment suppose he shall be the thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despise unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will reflect recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge what? His people. It is a fearful thing to be called unto the king. That is God. Alright. So, uh, there it is again. This is the Lord judging them. And he judges them, and they become brambles and are bound. Now, these are servants of the Lord. Okay? So, does that match Scripture? It matches Scripture for somebody in the tribulation. Now, this goes contrary to Scripture on the first day. The doctrine that we put on the Lord goes contrary to Scripture. But you're not on the You're not in the tribulation. I want to suggest you go there. So how do I go there? By rejecting Jesus Christ and not being saved before the rapture. Some people think they're in the tribulation. If you're not in the tribulation. And uh, the thing is, you get saved before that happens. And the Lord takes the church out before the tribulation. You don't go into the tribulation. When you start, it's the first thing. Daniel 73, because he's dealing with the Jewish nation again. The Gentiles have been cast off. Right now, God's dealing with the Jewish nation. But they're cast off when he starts dealing with the Jewish nation. Alright? Now, go to, uh, go back to, uh, look at Matthew 25. Now, here's, here's the past. I touched on this in Sunday school last week with the question and answer. There in Luke chapter 19, the fact chapter 25. Look at Acts chapter 25 and we find the parable of the sound. Notice what happens to this cell at the end of the day. And let's pick up verse uh, 30. Says, and can't see the unprofitable what? Service. It's the outer darkness. There's a deep and nothing of deep. Why was he unprofitable? Because he took his time and did it in the earth. And it says it's burned up, fancy the unprofitable service is out of us. I look down in the same chapter and look at the judgment of the nation. Uh, with verse 31 to 46, you have the judgment of the nation where it separates the goat from the sheep. And, uh, well, let's pick up, uh, let's just read to it. Pick up verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, second half, and all the holy angels with him, 
He returns with the saints, all the holy angels come to with him. He comes with 10,000 of his saints. Jews. Uh, he comes right on white horse, all the saints with him. All the way. Okay. With him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. When he'll reign. Be before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. He shall set the sheep on his right and the goat on his left. Then shall the king say unto them in his right hand, Come ye blessed are my father, and have the king prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and ye have gave me meat. I was a thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Second and you told me, I was second and you did me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when shall we be in hunger and fed to your church and you gave us be free? When shall we be strength and cooking in a method of clothing? Or when shall we be sick or in prison and you came out unto me? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I stand to you, and so much as ye have not done it unto the one of these, the least of these, my brethren, is done unto me. Now these brethren, I should be the rest of the people. Then shall I say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you serve me to everlasting fire, prepare for the devil. You know what them Jews will do that reject the heavenly gift and go back and make the covenant with death and hell as prophesied in Isaiah? You know what they're going to do? They're going to turn on their own family to the They'll be afraid to the Jews. They'll be afraid. They'll be like the Jews. They'll be afraid. Why will they do this? Because it's love and money? Because they can't find itself. Don't you realize the thorn, the reason the, when thorns come around the individual, it soaks out their fruit, and it's because of the cares of this world and the love of Christ. Look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. You folks can't buy or sell. Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. It says, uh, He that proceedeth seeing among the thorns, and he that careth the blade, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, self the blade, and he becometh unfruitful. Sounds like a guy that had talents that he did on the earth. He had no proof to show the truth. It's so funny. 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 And then goes down. He did receive his seed. Uh, what did he do with the blood? He brought the seed. That's why they mistakenly thought that that was the worst thing to bring up in the judgment of the Christ. It was a perfect thing. But uh, here, here, this guy, he goes back to the world sick. He goes back and he takes that mark. He worships the image of the beast, which is the same mark and worships the image of the beast. You have to reject Christ again. So they reject the Messiah once. If that during the tribulation was dead from the second time, of course, it's still an open thing. There ain't no way that that is my thing. And he can't repent after that. Or he can't find it to be like he wants to be. Because the example that's given is in Hebrews chapter 12. Now, I got to finish this up. Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 17. Here's the example. So they can't find repentance in. Hebrews chapter 10, the book who else can find it? Look at uh, uh, 
Let's get pick up verse uh, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. Doesn't really sound like church age of God, but he says, I did, God wasn't dead. Doesn't sound like it. All right? Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator of the same person as Esau, who for one more to a meat sold his birthright. He was desirous of something, he sold his birthright. He sold what was given to him. He despised it. For he know that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of Now, did Esau repent? He wanted the birthright. He changed his mind. He didn't repent. God didn't repent. He didn't get it. To it was God that doesn't repent. I buy a friend that also repent. Remember the God? God doesn't repent. He made up his mind. He made up his mind. He didn't have to do it. He just thought he'd say it. It's God that brought the world to form the place of life and the judge. Now, where is he saying? Now, where is he saying? He didn't repent so he cut him off. He stunned him. He saw a little bit of a He died because he had to be, because Christ had come back to go to the state of God. They can do that, but God can do that. He said, if you want to come back, you want to know what you're doing. He said, you want to be. But then he said, he's been in life, he's been in the Holy Ghost. They cannot find the thing if they go back and make the covenant to them. Stop. They're okay. And I'm not going to say that to everybody in the city, but for that, see the end of life, you can see the end of the day. He's done. So he goes back, so he does not do this to you. All right. Now, same example. Read down. Look at verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, we refuse him that spake on earth. Much more shall not we escape if we turn from him that speaketh from heaven. Now, what, what are they saying? If you read down through, you want to read the context here, uh, go back up to verse 21. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and sweat. But ye are come unto Mount Sinai, unto the city of the living God, and heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in it, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of Christ, that speaks of better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not, who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. I've already talked to you this, that the Lord appears to them. They see a vision of heaven with everything up there. They see it, and he speaks to them. Just like you did on Mount uh, Horeb, is it? Mount Horeb? Um, no, Mount Sinai. Just like you did on Mount Sinai in the Old Testament. And when they, if they take the sun from them after that, 
after we teach out heaven, they see something better than what Moses had with the children of Israel. And God rejected them and made them go back into the wilderness to be loud, rolling, and crossing. How much worse will it be for them to be in the wilderness to see that the Lord appears in heaven and the people of Israel? They were seen void of them. But they were just to go back. That's what we've been speaking to talk about. But they didn't see the talk about it because they didn't see the talk about it. It's all up here. Now, why does this time of day the first day? Not because you are not in the first day. It is not talking to a Gentile church. It is talking to the Hebrews that God starts building the nation of Israel again. And it says we bring them back as a nation to go into the land. And he saved them as a nation. That's a process that they go through through that time period up past the judgment of Jesus. It's a process to go through. And after the verse of the Lord comes back on the second day. That's tribulation doctrine. God, you cannot take certain ways to stop them and put it here with the God of the enemy. Because if you do, you're going to be teaching the man who is in salvation. Or take it. And it goes constantly. That's, that's why that guy is just going to tell the belief. Now I've got to wrap up. Anybody that believes that God is free to put it away. Faith that you take go all the way through the tribulation, you will find all the answers to the tribulation. I got something I can do in the first person where I can do the salvation. So I can give them a piece of the book of Jesus, how the book of Revelation, how the book of Matthew, how the book of Matthew, how the book of Matthew, and how the old Testament. I can give them a piece of the book of Matthew, and how 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 the book of Matthew, For but not a fellow who died in the He can lose his voice. He can lose his fellowship. He can lose his peace. He can lose the fruit of the Spirit in his life. But he can't lose his salvation. So his salvation is completely based on something God gives him to do. Once you receive it, you have it. You believe it. I believe in it. For it's so very I do not believe in it. For so any of that body outside of it. It's called the life of the body. I'll tell you, some of the things that I have to say to you, it's really just on my head. Any of that is just on my head. It's all of them. All right, all right. Now that was some real heavy news. Uh, I've been dreading teaching that now because I'm so much the hardest class in the world. That that goes to the I want to have you just fifty different theories on that one too. But uh, we'll take and take a look.